Hi everyone, this is Arvind from Mind Magics, and today I welcome you all to this amazing session on SAP Success Factors interview questions. Okay, so guys, in this particular video, we'll be covering around 30 questions. And once you go through these questions that we'll be discussing, so you can be sure of the fact that majority of the questions will come from these questions only. Okay, I'm talking about the actual interview. So these questions that we will be discussing will serve as a revision to the knowledge that you already know. Okay, so that is the whole purpose of making such videos. And before moving ahead, I want you guys to subscribe to Mind Magic's YouTube channel and also hit that bell icon so that you never miss an update from us. Okay, so without any further delay, let's get started with our first question. So the first question over here is, how do you integrate Employee Central with the other success factors products? Okay, so Employee Central integrates internally with other success factor products through the HRIS sync. The next question is, how do you integrate Employee Central externally with the other products? Okay, so in the previous question, it was internally. And in this question, we will talk about the external integration. So there is a cloud-based integration platform which is available for external integration in SAP success factors. The next question is, what does the succession data model contain? So the employee records are contained in the succession data model. The succession data mode configures the fields that will appear in the employee's personal information, which is outside of the work, employee information, which is inside of the work. The next question is, what is configured in the country specific succession data model? So here you can configure things such as address formats, country specific fields and international standards, which are set in the country specific succession data model. The next question is, what does the corporate data model define? So foundation objects and their relationships are defined in the corporate data model. And foundation and objects are also called as the foundation tables and they include organization, job, and pay. The next question is, what is defined in the country-specific corporate data model? So here the foundation object fields for a separate country are defined. The next question is, what is the propagation data model used for? So the HRIS propagation data model is used for the auto-population from foundation tables. The next question is, what other two data models are used? So data model, workflow rules, data model, event, and event derivation rules, data model. The next question is, how many data models are there in Employee Central? So HRIS propagation data model is used for the auto population from foundation tables. The next question is, how do you mask sensible data in a field? So to mask the sensible data or private information in a field, what you have to do is you have to set the attribute pi equal to true. And based on the previous question, the next question is, how do you set a field so that the user can edit it? So for this purpose, what you have to do is, you have to set the attribute visible equal to both. The next question is, how do you make a field be required to be filled? So for this, what you have to do is, you, have, you simply have to set the attribute required equal to true. The next question is, what is DTD? So DTD basically stands for document type definition of the data model. So here the my vision is to build a truly integrated HR in the cloud and a truly integrated HR is the key enabler for organizations to maximize their business outcomes. The next important question is why are they called success factors? So the answer to this question is because they are the behaviors that lead to successful performance in the job. And that is the reason they are called success factors. The next question is, why are there three levels within the framework? So the three levels basically describe a range of different types of behavior that are relevant to a range of different job roles. However, the levels within the frameworks are not hierarchical. The next question is, what are the levels linked to job grades? So just because someone is on a certain job grade, it doesn't rule out any of the levels. However, if a job is more senior, you would expect to see more of the university level behaviors. The next question is, what are they going to apply to academic staff as well? So there is a similar framework for the strategic leaders framework and one of 
the researchers which have been based on the success factors for the idea is going forward to have something similar for the staff groups in the university. The next question is, will success factors be used to get rid of people? So that is not why the success factors has been developed. So they are used to develop individuals. However, if the behavior is essential to the job and there continues to be no development, then it could become a performance issue. The next question is, what if the employee doesn't agree with the success factors that their manager has chosen? So the manager uses the job analysis information to determine the success factor for the role in the conjunction with discussions with the individual. However, it is ultimately the manager's decision. The next question is, once a success factor has been chosen for a role, can it be changed? So the answer to this question is yes, it depends on the requirements or the needs of the role at any point of time. It is fluid or flexible and therefore you may change year on year. The next question is, if a success factor is changed during a year, how do you know what will you be reviewed against at the next PDR? So through dialogue or communication between the manager and the individual, the change can also be flagged on the PDR form. The next question is, do you have to choose the same level for all of the success factors that can be identified? So the answer to this question is no. However, it may be that they tend towards one particular level. The next question is, if success factors are important, how do you pick the right ones? So you can use the job analysis information and the advice from your HRO and other managers with the same roles to determine roughly three to five core success factors. After this, it will become very easy for you to practice with. The next question is, what if the success factor for a role is what the job requires as a technical output? For example, communicating for a careers advisor. So there may be a technical requirement to do that, but success factors are about how the job is done or the behaviors required in carrying out their job efficiently. The next question is, if an individual achieves all of the success factors, so does that mean that they will get promoted or they will get more pay? So not directly, but yes, the more successful the individual is in their role or he or she can demonstrate effective job performance and additional behaviors as well. So this can be used as an evidence in any job application or pay review case. The next question is, what support will I have in using these success factors? So managers will receive training and success factor documentation and guidance on its use will be available on the HR website. So members of the HR team will be able to provide advice as per the requirements. The next question is, won't the choice of success factors be too subjective? So there is always an element of subjectivity in any process dealing with people. However, success factors are objective standards or benchmarks with good examples. The next question is, how much evidence in assessing success factors will be expected to produce? So normally, you have to look over the previous 12 months for examples and pick out two or three which demonstrate the success factors the most. The next question is, won't the assessment of success factors take too long? So initially, making the assessment may take some time because it is a new process and we are dealing with new concepts, but it is worthwhile for the benefits that they bring to the table. So guys, with this, we have come to the end of this session on SAP success factors interview questions. I hope you guys have enjoyed this session. If at all you have any queries or doubts related to this session, then you can write them in the comments section and my team is here to help you resolve all your doubts and queries. So guys, thank you so much for being with us and I wish you all the very best for your upcoming SAP success factors interview.